Hey everyone, it's Mike, Rocky Ridge. I'm out here about 8 o'clock in the morning. It's uh, the heat finally went away a little bit. Nice, cool, crisp air. And I got the racing team flying. And the Pakistani high flyers are about a thousand miles up somewhere. Yeah, so as soon as these pigeons come down, I'm going to try to um, get them in back of the truck and take them out on a toss. So we'll see how that goes. Let's see, they've been flying for 45 minutes now, and um, they should be thinking about coming down for a drink, if nothing else. So I have one bird up there that's not quite keeping up with the others and I believe it's a bird that had a little bit of a respiratory problem a few weeks ago and I gave it antibiotics and I separated them and I got him back to health and um, he was flying real good uh, up until now he's starting to starting to hang back a little bit but <clears throat> uh, probably what I'll do with that bird is uh, take it off the team and just save it for old bird season because if I keep pushing it, um, it'll either get real sick or I'll just lose it. And there's no need of it. It's a good bird. And uh, I've had young ones that had problems before and I still pushed them through. Uh, a couple of them I still have, but they didn't do good racing anyway. And if, But they did good uh, on the old bird season. So that's what I... That's what I kind of learned, you know, just put them, put them aside or just put them directly in with the old birds and, uh, and just give them the season off. And they come back. They come back real strong. My nephew came with a drone, and um, his drone goes up 400 feet. And the high flyers were probably about 50 to 100 feet higher than that. So that's, that's about the height, I'm guessing, that they, uh, they hang around about 500 feet up. Oh, there's, there's the high flyers. Uh, let's see, right there. But they, they have nothing to do with, uh, with racing pigeons. They, they don't... Um, They don't fly with them, not even for a second. They, they have nothing to do with them. That well, looks like these guys might finally come down. Yesterday they flew for an hour and a half because the air was nice just like today. And I didn't think that they would quite go as long today. Oh, there's a bird. That sounded like he just came out of a tree. Got a lazy one, I guess. But when I have time, this is where I like to sit and watch the birds and um, have my coffee. Yeah, it makes a real nice morning, especially when it's a nice day like this. Uh, 83 I counted them last night I haven't lost any birds for a long time going real slow with the birds this year um, even with molting them out, I'm still flying them, but I haven't even started training tossing yet. Yeah, I see that bird right there is not doing well. But um, even when I start training tossing, I'm going to go very slow because I'm tired of losing good birds just because I'm trying to, you know, trying to accomplish a goal that's not even a real thing. When it's time to push them, you know, you're talking four weeks, maybe three weeks before a race, you start to get them out far. 
but I just think the more time goes by that you let them loft fly and uh, short training tosses, the better results you're going to get. Because I've done it both ways and I've lost, you know, as many as 20 birds on a ridiculous training toss where, um, you know, good birds, great birds, and just pushed them too fast and, you know, you just reducing your numbers of, of uh, really good birds for no reason so I take it slow now some people say well th those birds uh, deserve to be lost but I, d I don't feel that's that's a um, that's an approach that I'm gonna embrace at all because your pigeons uh, they don't know they're racing birds for one thing and um, they're just doing the best that they can to survive so if you go slow with them they will get into the habit of of what needs to be done but if you push them too fast they, i think they get confused you know we we think that they're racing and they just think that they're flying around and uh, coming home for some food you know so you have to establish strong habits with them. I put some electrolytes in their water yesterday and uh, vitamins in their feed and all that kind of good stuff and um, looks like we got we got the birds back flying in an hour even though they missing their first uh, or I should say their tenth flight. I pulled that out a couple weeks ago and a lot of them are missing, you know, sixth or seventh flight, and uh, they're still flying for an hour. So <clears throat> that's another thing I don't believe in locking up the birds for a month and a half after after pulling their flights because they can still fly, and there's no reason to get them all out of shape. Just let them fly. And besides, if you do everything the same way that everybody else does. And all you can expect is the same results that they get. I don't really want the same results. I want I want better results. So I try I try as hard as I can not to listen to anyone's opinion when it comes to my birds because I've done that in the past and had terrible results. So I'm gonna I'm going to listen to the birds from now on. And then they tell you a lot if you know how to look at them and watch their behavior and watch them fly and if you know what you're looking for you can find out a lot just by just by observing them all right i think they're finally going to come down it's been about an hour and 10 minutes here we go that's kind of their routine they always drop onto the house for some reason and then go to the loft After they all get in and get a drink, then I'm going to throw some feed in the back of the truck and see if I can get them all in the truck and uh, just take them down the road a little ways. And then when they come back again, I'll give them a nice, uh, nice big feed for the day that they deserved.
I think that's all of them in here. I don't see any more shadows. Um, let's see if we can get them to walk the plank here. So what I have here is a, um, it's a, it's a, it's called pigeon and dove feed and it's very small seeds. So, because I don't want to fill the birds up, I just want to get them out here. So let's throw some of these in back of the truck. Okay. I, uh, I thought I was filming, but um, I th what I did was I threw the seed in here and they all rushed in. And then as soon as most of them got in, I took this here and just dropped it in like that and um, pushed them that way and shut the sliding door. And I still have six pigeons on the inside here that I need to catch. As soon as I catch them, I'll, uh, I'll be on my way. Alright, I got the last six. So, you guys are ready to go for a little ride? Let's do it. Alright, first toss, about a half a mile. This guy looks like he's trying to get out. But, um, I don't really like those wires right there, but uh, I think they'll be fine. They're far enough away from them. Let's let them out, see how they do. <clears throat> come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Now they did fine with the wires. They're up and out. And uh, there you go, first toss. Let's see, uh, let's see if they want to fly around a little bit or if they're just going to go straight home. They just landed. They were here when I got home, but I was mixing up their feed, getting it ready. So I'm going to call them in. Good day's work today. See if there's anybody left outside. Oh, just a couple stragglers there. They got something else on their mind. Yeah, they're going to be hungry tomorrow. Now everybody's in now. Alright, well, thanks for watching everybody. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like the videos. Please subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one.